six, five, four, three, two, one. Tonight, come on, everybody, get on your feet. Happy Monday to you. Welcome to Jesus Week 2019. Somebody make some noise for Jesus Christ. We, we honor the name of Christ. We celebrate everything that the cross represents. We are saved because of the cross, the finished work of Christ. And tonight, we don't just celebrate the Christ, the cross, but we celebrate the church of Jesus Christ. We are the church. Come on, celebrate your brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. Will y'all help me welcome and celebrate the people who are streaming in from all around the world? Come on, help me welcome them. Tonight, as we celebrate the body of Christ, one of the king's priests, generals, in the kingdom of God just came in. Help me celebrate the Honorable Dr. Jeremiah A. Wright. We celebrate you, sir. We love you. We honor you. Make some noise! Well, tonight as we celebrate all over the building, I want to invite you to go all over the building, hug everybody you can, welcome somebody, show love to somebody. We celebrate the church, we celebrate each other, we celebrate one another. Those of you that are worshiping with us from wherever you are, stay with us. Don't you touch your phone, don't you touch your computer. It's Jesus week. And we're celebrating all week long the name of our Christ, our King. That's right. While you're standing, I want to invite you to use your, to your, your phone as a tool. I would invite you to use it as a weapon against the enemy tonight. That's right. I would invite you to use your phone as a weapon tonight against the enemy. I want you to tweet, post. I want you to take notes. And I want you to share everything you receive throughout the night. Matter of fact, go on and go on and, and make Jesus week trend this week. Go on and make it a trend this week. We're going we're gonna to have some good news taking over Facebook this week. Listen to me. Use the hashtag Jesus week. Use the hashtag Jesus week. Use the hashtag Jesus week. Every night we begin with what we call a Jesus talk. A Jesus talk in the hurry and scurry and busyness of our lives this week is the week where God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life whatever your praise is we take it to another level whatever your devotion is we take it to another level and our focus on the life of Christ, we want to take it to another level. In a meditative, meditative, contemplative state of mind, we want to re-engage the life of Christ. Who is Jesus? What does Jesus mean for us? What does it look like to live for Jesus Christ? And so every single night we will open up with a Jesus talk as we re-engage the life of Christ. Let yesterday at 8 a.m. he blessed our socks off. He is back today for the Jesus talk. Come on, help me welcome my dear friend, Pastor Frederick Wilson. Come on, help me thank God for him. I love you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Well, come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus, everybody. Oh, no, I said, let's put our hands together for Jesus, everybody. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord to our pastor, Pastor Charles Jenkins. Lady Tara, we love you. Pastor Sharp, come on. Pastor Reginald Sharp, we love you, man. Honored to call you brother. Lady Bree, we love you, sister. It's like one big family up in here. Dr. Jeremiah Wright is in the building. My God. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. How many are honored to be in the presence of the Lord on a Monday evening? We thank you, Pastor Jenkins, for this Jesus Week starting uh, a trend here in Chicago. We look forward to it. It sets the tone and the stage of our Easter resurrection celebration. And just honored to be here on yesterday. And uh, he's got any number of friends he could call. So it must have meant I messed up so bad. <laughs> he said, Fred, I'm going to give you another chance to get this right. Well, they all pray for brother. Honor to be sharing. Um, Mark 11. Mark chapter number 11. It opens with the triumphal entry of Jesus that we celebrated on yesterday. And then as he's leaving, the procession is over, he gets into Jerusalem. He's pretty much kind of going back to the house to rest for the evening. Goes into Monday, the Bible says, literally the next morning, the next morning. It says, Jesus and his boys were walking you all and he was hungry. Isn't that amazing? The bread of life got hungry. We see a picture of his humanity. He gets hungry and he passes a fig tree. The Bible says the fig tree didn't have any figs on it. Because sometimes you can look good but not be producing anything. And he curses the fig tree. He says, may, may, may nothing ever grow on you again. He didn't touch it. He didn't spray any pesticide or Roundup. He spoke to it. There was no evidence when he spoke that anything had changed. Because sometimes when you speak a word, the word is working underneath the surface and you can't give up on a word that you have claimed just because it hasn't manifested in the, spirit, in the, in the natural yet. He speaks a curse over a fig tree. Nothing in the natural happens. They go home. They come back down the same road and the fig tree has withered. The fig tree has withered completely up. And the disciples are, uh, they're, they're my, it amazes me how they got surprised so much. All these miracles and they're still surprised at whatever Jesus did. They said, man, Jesus, look, the fig tree that you spoke to has dried up. And Jesus says to them, church, he says, have faith in God. He says, for you shall have what you say. God, I wish I had some Bible readers. Chapter 11, round about verse 22 or 23, he says, you shall have what you say. If you say, not if you pray, not if you shout, he said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it would do what you say. He would say, and Jesus, ought to, he knew the power of words because Jesus himself is the word of God. There's power in our words. Proverbs even says that the power of death and life is right there in our tongue. Jesus is the word of God. John 1 says this about our Savior, that in the beginning, hallelujah, was the word. And the word was 
with God. Come on, church, read your Bible. The word was with God, and the word was God, and nothing was made. Everything that was made, John 1 says, it was made through the word. Are y'all with me in here? I simply want to talk to you for these moments tonight. We need to be like Jesus and put a word on it. As a matter of fact, put the word on it. The Bible says, my brothers and sisters, if you drop down in John 1 to 14, that it was the word that became flesh. So literally when our creative God speaks and he says, let there be light, the words that came from his mouth were Jesus himself. It was that word, that logos, the logic of God, the express thought of God that was made into flesh. And Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus and Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus and Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus and later on in the week they tried to kill the word oh yes they did they tried to nail the, 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 the nail the word to the cross and kill the word but you know just like Martin Luther King you can kill a dreamer but you can't never kill the dream you can kill a revolutionary but you can never kill a revolution and you might try and kill the flesh that carried the word of God but Jesus says heaven and earth will pass away but my word shall never pass away Tasha Cobb said put a praise on it and I do believe you need to put a praise on it every now and then but tonight for these next three minutes I just want you to put the word on it whatever you're going through on Jesus week I know you look churchy tonight but put the word on your child your child may go through seasons of ups and downs but Jesus is the same yesterday today and forevermore put the word on it put the word on your finances because the economy goes up and down stocks up today down tomorrow oh but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and go help me preach a lecture help me lecture for a while and tell us put the word on it the whole Bible is Jesus Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus somebody help me say Jesus is the word Matthew, he is the Lion of Judah. Mark, he is a lowly servant and a humble healer. Luke, he's the Son of Man. John, he's the Bread of Life. Acts, he's the Founder of the Church. Romans, he's the Renewer of my mind. First Corinthians, he's the Indescribable Gift. Second Corinthians, he's my Strength when I'm weak. God, help me bless somebody. Galatians, he's my freedom. Uh, Ephesians, he all things are under his feet. Uh -huh. Philippians, I can do all things that strengthens me. Colossians, my record has been nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians, Jesus delivers us from the wrath that is to come. Second Thessalonians, he gave us grace and peace. First Timothy, he is our grace and our hope. Second Timothy, the word of God cannot be chained. Titus, he declared us the righteousness of God. Philemon, he is my forgiveness. Hebrews, he's the author and the finisher of my faith. James, he helps me to resist the devil. First Peter, he's called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Second Peter, he is not slack concerning his promise. First John, Jesus is God's love revealed. Second John, Jesus is God's truth revealed. Third John, we shall be just like him. Jude, he's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Revelation, he's the soon coming king. I came to find somebody that was ready to put a word on it. I said put the word on it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pastor Wilson. Wait a minute, Pastor Jenkins. I don't know all those scriptures. I don't know all those books of the Bible. I don't know all that.
that word. Well, if you can't put all that word on it, there's one word that you can put on every situation that will change it in a millisecond. There's just one word, and all you need is to be able to put this word. What is this word? I love him, but the word ain't Jenkins. I love him, but the word ain't sharp. But do I have anybody that knows what that word is? Matthew, Mark, Luke, all of it is in one word. And on the count of three, I want you to get every problem in your mind, every situation in your mind, every issue in your mind, and put a word on it. That name is Jesus. And on the count of three, I want you to tear the roof off this place and put a word on it. One, two, three. What's his name? Who's gonna save him? Who's gonna make a way? Now praise him like a word is get on your feet all over the building come on help me thank God for Pastor Frederick Wilson put a word on it well welcome to Jesus week we gonna move it this brother is a gift to the kingdom of God and to the body of Christ. He is shaking the very core of the earth with his ministry. He is one of the most sought after ministers of the gospel through music in the body of Christ today. I can't wait for y'all to see him this Sunday on BET on the Stella Awards. He ripped the place apart for the King of Kings. He leads our time of worship. It's his first time in the ship tonight. Y'all make some noise and help me welcome Kalante Gavin. Hallelujah. What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> Can somebody do me a favor? It's so good when you know his name. But it's not enough for you to know it. You got to put some action behind what you know. And all praise and worship is in an, is an intimate response. <sighs> Not just to the name of Jesus, but to the person of Jesus. I just want to set some house rules for about 30 seconds for about the five to ten minutes that I do have. Because I do want to make sure I come back. Can you guys please help me honor Pastor Jenkins and Lady Jenkins? I love y'all so much. Ten minutes. I'm, I'm not ten minutes. Can you guys help me honor my big brother? Y'all, I just met him today. I mean, over cyber and Instagram and all that other stuff. Can you help me honor Pastor Reginald Sharp and Lady Bree Sharp? I love you guys. I love you guys, and for our speaker of the hour, God bless you. To the faithful ministry gifts of Pastor Pastor Solomon, God bless you. Um, I'm just a little country boy from South Carolina who follows a lot of you guys, so I'm honored uh, to be in your presence. Um, I, uh, the house rules, just for the little country boy from South Carolina, um, is that I want to make sure that on each roll you have a set it off person, and and what what a set it off person is. What, what a pastor, what, what, a, what a set it on person is, is you let your whole row know when I open up my mouth, you open up your mouth. When I worship, you worship. When I dance, you dance. When I praise, you praise. Now on the count of three, I know we shout Jesus, but I want you to put some action behind what you just said. On the count of three, make sure you set it off on your row. Y'all ready? One, two, three, shout. You got 30 seconds to set it off on your road. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Is there any praises in here? That's just what I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My mouth got to do what my body can. And I need 
Favorite, grab somebody by the hand, and I ain't talking no more. I'm singing. Grab somebody by the hand, squeeze their hand, just squeeze your neighbor's hand. And um, uh, the reason I want you to hold your neighbor's hand because I want them to know that you know what we're talking about. Um, yeah, I, I promise y'all, I ain't performing. I really feel like running. He, he got me, he got me. I really, it's tight in here, but I feel because I'm from the woods. We don't, we, 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 we don't look important at the beginning of the service. We praise now when you ask questions later. I really feel a crazy shout in this house. Squeeze your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready. So praise God for just this thing, for just sending Jesus. I wish somebody would pick up your feet. We moving. I got somebody clap your hands. We go. We go. Hey! Y'all got a mic. Y'all got a mic. Y'all got a mic. Get a mic. I feel like having church. Somebody clap your hands. Jesus, we somebody clap your hand. Thank you for sending Jesus. This place is simply ready. Tell me what's his name, Jesus. What's his name? 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 They still looking. We gonna go cut. They still looking. And we... <laughs> y'all all right? Y'all all right? Just a second ago, your mouth had to do what your body couldn't. Now I need you to your for your body to do what your mouth can. You got one last time, and, and we're just gonna praise him just for Jesus. One, two, three, two, one, two, three.
tonight I did somebody says Jesus uh, I told you I'm just a country boy from South Carolina and every now and then I can hear in my uncle's church in the woods of South Carolina outside of Charleston South Carolina and an old white churchy holiness building and an old mother would jump and say Jesus I'll never forget what you done for me Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. You say, Jesus, I'll never forget. You say, Jesus, I'll never forget. I 
in the audience and that's old and some of them don't know that. Um, uh, living, he loved me. Down, moment can you just say something sweet to him every worshiper oh you are the Jesus ah there's nobody like you Jesus no oh, oh, oh. there's nobody like you Jesus there's nobody like you So woman, issue of blood, had it for 12 for long years, and the Bible says, this woman, the more she went to physicians, the more she went to doctors, instead of getting better. She grew worse, she grew worse, she grew worse, she grew worse, she grew worse. And the Bible says she's in the presence of Jesus with her issue. She makes up in her mind, in her mind. If I can just touch by the hem of his garment If I can but touch by the hem of his garment I know I will be made whole There are some people in the room tonight Just like the woman with an issue so all I need is a touch from Jesus yeah. And this is what a true worshiper is I don't need Jesus to touch me But I'm so desperate for a miracle tonight I'm gonna touch him Is there any worshipers in this building tonight That says even before the word comes I'm gonna reach out and touch him Cause I'm desperate for you I'm desperate for you for you, I'm desperate for you, I'm desperate for you. All I need is one touch, Jesus. And when I touch you, everything changes. When I touch Jesus, everything changes. When I touch Jesus. Everything changes. 
didn't mess around and wrote a song, fellas, yeah. When I touch Jesus, you say everything changes. Everything changes. Ooh. Give it to me, don't lose me. When I touch Jesus, Changes. You say everything changes. Say it again right here. Say everything. Everything. Uh, no. Everything changes. You say everything. I don't know what you stand in need of tonight, but everything changes. Say everything. Everything, everything, everything changes. When I touch Jesus, everything changes. When I touch Jesus, everything changes. Jesus, 
Let me touch you and see if you are real. I know you are real. I know you are real. I can't see you, but I can feel you. Everything changes. I can't see. Everything changes. In high school, my 12th grade year, I took a morality, ethics, and religion class. And uh, at the end of one of the semesters, our teachers uh, didn't do a debate, but he wanted to hear from each student. At the end of me giving whatever I believed in, uh, one of my friends asked me, he said, Kalante, why do you go hard for your God that you can't see? I told my friend, I said, hey, man, what you're missing is that when I first met him, I couldn't see him. But I felt him. And I said, friend, that wasn't the only thing. I said, I didn't just feel him, but I experienced him. 
Jesus is at the well with the Samaritan woman. And the Bible says that he tells the woman in the particular verse of John 4. He says, woman, for you know not what you worship. But we Jews know what we worship. For God is spirit and he's seeking for worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Pastor Jenkins, I had the opportunity with my 20-year-old country self to look up the word K-N-O-W there in the text. I'm not a preacher. I'm just a lover of the word of God. In order to be, to be an effective worshiper, you have to be an effective word studier. Because the more you get to read, the more you should get to know and the better you should get to worship. And the better you get to worship, the more you get to experience him. And the more you get to experience him, the more you get to know him. And the more you get to know him, the more you want to worship him. The more you get to worship him, the more he gets to know him. The more you get to know him, the better you get to worship him. The better you get to worship him, the more you get to know him. The more you get to know him, the deeper you get to worship him. The deeper you get to know him, the more you want to worship him. And I looked up Pastor Jenkins, K-N-O-W in the text, and it says that the word means yata. He was telling the woman, it's not what you know in the intellectual of your mind. He says, but you have not experienced what you know. I grew up in church and uh, all I thought I knew was church. New scriptures, but I didn't know Jesus. And I'm finally at a place where in my life, man, Reggie, where people will not hinder me from giving God glory. Because I got to experience Jesus for myself. How do you know when you get to experience Jesus? Something about you changes. It caused a little 14 year old boy to be in the school cafeteria, leaned over kind of with a peanut butter jelly sandwich in his hand. And he could have been in school. So he was doing something, God knows whatever else. And the cafeteria worker said, hey, we know you can sing, sing something for us. And I said, well, uh, this guy leaned over the cafeteria and said, I've had some good days. Eyes closed, he gripped the bag, said, I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. Ah, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road, but I ask a question, Lord. Why so much pain? But you see, good. Knows what's best for me Although my weary eyes They may not see So instead of complaining I'll lift my hand and say Thank you Lord You've been a good God over and over again You keep blessing little old kid I'll say thank you Lord You put a roof over my head You put clothes on my back You put shoes on my feet I will say thank you Lord oh, I won't complain, God, been real good to me. Is that anybody's testimony? Yeah. He's been so good to me, more than this whole world, or you could ever be. He's been so good, he's been so good to me. Can I tell you what he did? Tried my tears away, turned my midnight into day. So I had to say, thank you, Lord. You've been a good God. I will say, thank you, Lord. Over and over and over and over and over again. You keep blessing me. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, better than God to me. Oh. 
oh, 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 you've been good to me. So I'll just say, please get the track ready. Thank you, Lord. I will say, thank you, Lord. Can you try it? I will say, thank you, Lord. Ah, at the end of the day, every day, I won't complain. Can you clap your hands and somebody tell them, thank you. Come on, help me thank God for the ministry, my God, Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God moved. We want to be sensitive to the Spirit. At the same time, I want to make sure we get the man of God up tonight. Come on, stand on your feet all over the building as we partake of the Holy Sacrament. Help me welcome the pastor of the Greater Harvest Church. Our dear friend, Pastor Eric Thomas. Come on, help me thank God for him. Come on, everybody, let's give God praise for the man of God, our pastor. Pastor Sharp, Pastor Wright. Would you do me a favor as we prepare to commune together? Would you just tell somebody I thank God for the blood? Because the blood kept the bullet from coming in your door. The blood kept cancer from taking you out of here. Just look around and tell somebody else, I thank God for the blood of Jesus. Not just any blood, but the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says, wherever I see the blood, I'll pass over. And because of the blood of tonight, amen, you didn't lose your mind. You could have went cuckoo for cocoa puffs, but because of the blood, we are still here. And somebody say glory to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for I have received of the Lord that, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it, and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Can we all share in the blood tonight? And tell somebody else, I thank God for the blood. And after the same manner, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, and as often as you drink it, it is in remembrance of me. Come on, let's drink together, everyone. Now tell somebody, I thank God for my medicine. It is in Jesus' name. God bless you. Come on, help me thank God again for Pastor Thomas. You may have your seats, everybody, all over the building. Please turn your attention to the screens. Good evening, Fellowship Chicago. My name is Reginald Sharp Jr. I'm Aurelia Daniels. And this is another edition of your Global Report brought to you by FNN. Fellowship News Network. Breaking news tonight. According to Open Doors USA, the top five most oppressive nations for Christians are North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, and Pakistan. And you know, Aurelia, this is interesting because North Korea is number one on the list. 
which means Christians are going through the most persecution in that country. One of the reasons they're going through so much in that country is because it is a communist nation and it is led by the leader Kim Jong-un. His family has led that country for three decades and they do not want anyone living in that country to worship anything or anyone other than them. This creates a lot of tension in that country and so we must continue to pray for people living under that type of rule, that type of steel iron leadership. There are over 25 million inhabitants in North Korea and only 300,000 Christians, which means it is hard being a minority, being a Christian in a nation that does not want you to worship Jesus Christ. You can lose your life for reading the Bible, for saying the name Jesus. It is very dangerous in that country right now. So we want to pray tonight. We want to pray for all of the Christians under persecution, that they are protected. We also want to pray for governmental policy change. And then we want to pray for courage and strength for, for our sisters and brothers who are under persecution. Well, folks, this concludes another edition of the Global Report. Brought to you by FNN. Fellowship News Network. We pray that tonight's experience will leave you eternally transformed. Until next time. Good night. Amen. Dr. John Kenny is one of my preaching heroes. I will never forget the privilege that I had to sit under his ministry at the National Baptist Convention. I promise you, you will never be the same. For okay. over 35 years, he has been Stop the distinguished pastor of the Ebenezer yes. Baptist Church. All right. Turn the lights on. Yes. Please welcome Pastor Will Hall to lead us in a prayer for the global church. Listen, let's grab somebody by the hand tonight. As you bow your heads tonight, we lost a great cathedral across the water, but three homes, three homes of worship in Louisiana were burned down as well. As you bow your heads and you close your eyes, 1.3 kids didn't eat today. Flint still has dirty water. We need heaven to respond tonight. Tomorrow may not come. So as you're grabbing the hand of somebody, pray for a continent tonight. You got North America, you got South America, you got Asia. As you open up your mouth, just pray for Australia. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you tonight. God, the earth is yours. And so, Father, wherever our brothers and sisters are tonight, we ask that you touch them in a special way. Father, for those that are persecuted for righteousness, say, God, we ask that you cover them. God, we know that in the times we're in, it's hard. And so, Father, we pray that you send healing in the land. Father, we pray that you work miracles before we even say amen. For those that are suffering with no health care, Father, bless them in the name of Jesus. For the 65 that were shot in Chicago, heal in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we pray for revival tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray for somebody to walk closer with you tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray for somebody to get manna from heaven in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we know the world is going to be a better place. And so we trust in you that your angel are on the post in every continent God that you created and so God when we leave this place may we be lights wherever we go and God I pray that you use fellowship Chicago tonight to brighten this world through the word of God through the worship that has already gone forth and when we wake up tomorrow may it be a better place because of what you did in this place in Jesus name amen if you believe the world is going to be a better place come on put your hands together dr. John Kenny is one of my preaching heroes I will never forget the privilege that I had to sit under his ministry at the National Baptist Convention. I promise you, you will never be the same. For over 35 years, he has been the distinguished pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Beaver Dam, Virginia. Around the world, he is known as a systematic theologian 
academician, and champion administrator. He has shared the gospel all around the world and served as a guest lecturer at a multiplicity of universities, including Yale, Duke, Michigan State, Howard, Southern Methodist, and so many others. We are excited to welcome one of the foremost thought leaders in the kingdom of God. Please stand and welcome Dr. John Kinney. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Under the only one wise God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God of amazing grace, and the God of shared presence, the God who is so secure in being God, that God gives you the epitome manifestation of power. Regrettably, we live in a world where people think power is your capacity to put somebody else down while you lift somebody yourself up. But God is so secure in God that God not only loves you, God will release anything that God has so that you can be all that you can be. God is so powerful. God... That you're never powerful until you can release what you got so somebody else can be. As long as you need to restrict life in somebody else, you shrink yourself. <clears throat> but God is so secure in being God that God releases the essence of God so that God will release what God has so that you can be all that you can be. And after God releases, God ain't scared of none of us. Because after you be all that you can be, you stand, still can't be God. To that God be all power, glory, honor, dominion, power, and praise this night. That God <clears throat> has privileged us to share in this moment. That God that privileges me to stand in fellowship tonight to your esteemed pastor, Pastor Jenkins, to Pastor Sharp, to... Not only to them, but I always, when I recognize pastors and they got a partner in life, I acknowledge what they have to do to be partners in life and love. But I thank God for each and every one of you. If I can honor a pastor and disrespect you, there is no worship in me. Because each and every one of you have intrinsic value and worth. And you represent a singular, unique expression of divine dexterity. Where God took the finger of God's love and formed you. There was never anyone like you before you and never be another like you after you. No two snowflakes have the exact same design. No two leopards have the same spots. No two zebras or tigers have the same stripes. No two whales have the exact same flukes. No two human beings have the same retinal rod configuration in your eye. Even the same scent in your body. Not the same DNA markers. Not the same fingerprints. Meaning you're, you're, you're not like somebody else. And when I dishonor you, I don't just dishonor you. I dishonor the unique thing God did when God made you. And I don't want to violate God tonight. So I greet all of you. To God be the glory. As I greet you, if you afford my privilege, I just saw that my brother and dear friend over the years... Oh, came in this morning and I went to just sit with my brother, Dr. Jeremiah Wright. In just a moment to thank God for him, for the gift, for his suffering. 
and to apologize for the folk he suffered for who didn't lift him up when other folk were trying to put him down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God um, for all of you. Now, y'all got all this energy up in this house. And then you're going to bring a grandfather 22 times to preach. Yesterday, I celebrated my 72nd birthday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, 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 I told pastor that there were some people in my house that weren't too happy that I was leaving on the day of my, after my birthday. But uh, I told them where I was going mm -hmm, and who I was going to be with. And then I told him, and I'm going to see Jeremiah Wright. Go ahead. Get going. Move. Go ahead. <laughs> I also, if you all afford me the privilege, I have some uh, folk here, Reggie, Jerry, I get to see, I see a lot of other folk, Malik, come on. Uh, these are some folk in here who I've had the privilege of being in the classroom and teaching. Would y'all stand up? All the folk all the way around, I'm gonna show you, I want y'all to look. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> um, we had a program for here for years, uh, primarily uh, through uh, uh, Dr. Wright and a vision that he had and we shared. We had the Center for African American Theological Studies. And we got about 40 folk who, have, who were able to study here and come to Virginia Union for intensive to earn a Master's of Divinity degree. And you got about 40 folk who have got theological education by coming to class just two weeks out of every term. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And I thank God. Thank God for that. Now, I don't want to keep you all night, but I thank you for your presence. Now, um, um, I've, I have heard a prayer for the church. I have um, uh, felt the word about Jesus. So I guess I need to take you to the cross. <laughs> um... um and I'm going to do this the way I do it, okay? Um, uh, I wrote a devotional for a, a Lenten devotional called So I Send You that comes out of New York. And uh, on Thursday, my, my devotional is the, is the focus leading in uh, to Good Friday. And it's entitled A Light in the Dark. And uh, in the devotional, I made some suggestive comments. And as I was meditating and praying about what I would share tonight, uh, the Spirit said, now, if you can make some suggestive comments in the devotional, see if you can turn that into a word to speak to the people. Uh, what inspired the devotional is I got uh, 22 grandchildren. Amen. Amen. No, no, no. Let, let me be real. I got three birth children. I got four other young men I took into my house and raised. They're my wife and I, and I thank God for my wife because she had to make a whole lot of sacrifices to invest in some young people. Amen. To God, to God be the glory. Uh, but they've all brought children into the world. And uh, for me, if you family, you family. I don't have halves, fosters, some way, some guy. No, no, if you in my house, you mine, and whatever I got, amen, amen. So I claim them all, I, amen, praise God. Well, um, we have a practice in the month of July, they stay with us. Brian, where are you, Brian? Brian has been so gracious, driving me around today. Uh, uh, you know, he tell me about he got one grandchild. <laughs> amen, uh, they spend July with us. Well, one night we'd all gone to bed and all of a sudden I hear this scream. Papa! Papa! Hurry, hurry! I 
jump up. I run into where my tw grandson twins were sleeping. And I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And one of them says, we need a nightlight. It's dark in here. And I, responding, I was a little bit agitated. And they weren't these three or four year babies anymore. They were now 11 years there. And so I gave them the lecture about you're too big. You don't need that. And then I got the profound response from 11 year old that put me in your place. And he said, Papa, I don't care how big you are. Everybody needs a light in the dark. <laughs> oh. If you allow me, I just want to take a few minutes to look at the cross as a light in the dark. And if you could follow me, I, I, I have to do what I do. That whenever I, you know, if I, if I was home, it'd be up on the screen. The four points I want you to get and I would point you and take you to the transitions. There is a disruption that leads to darkness that gives rise to a discovery that leads to an altered destiny. A disruption. Come on. That engenders darkness where you experience a discovery that allows you to claim a destiny beyond your darkness. Now let's look and let's pray. God, I never go where I go without trying to discern God's purpose. That's why I wanted to be out here and feel it. I wanted to feel the gift of the musician. I want to feel the prayer. I want to feel the spirit that is in the house. Because whenever God gives you a moment, he never gives you a moment without purpose. And don't you ever accept a moment and then act outside of God's purpose. So if y'all don't mind, I need to pray before I say a word. Gracious God, I thank you so much now. We thank you. We thank you for Jesus. God, I thank you for this pastor and this fellowship. God, I thank you that somehow in your infinite wisdom and amazing grace, you have me standing somewhere where I never stood before. Now, God, I... I'm trying to discern what you're up to. I tried to prepare myself for the purpose. But God, I'm far beyond the arrogance of self-sufficiency that think that I could make it through my own capacity. God, can I just be selfish for a moment and ask for a fresh anointing? Hallelujah. Can I ask you, God, to use us to transform this moment that we might cross the threshold of glory and glory prepare us to be agents of transformation in a world that loves graves more than glory we're yours Lord and we surrender all in Jesus name we pray now, all of us are familiar with the way Luke describes Jesus on the cross. And I certainly don't want to intrude upon those who will be speaking the seven last expressions. And I don't want to take you to Good Friday, but I do want to take you to some moments on the cross. And it says that about noon, the sun stopped shining. And darkness covered the entire earth till about three o'clock in the afternoon. And the curtain in the temple was torn 
In Matthew it says not only was it torn, it was torn from top to bottom. And then Jesus said, Father, my God, I put all this in your hands. I deposit the totality of my being and the reality of this moment in your hands. And then he died. Yeah, he did die. Don't spiritualize it, roseate it. <laughs> Come on. He suffered and died. What the text says, the sun, or it got dark at noonday. The first suggestion that I want to make is that sometimes in your walk with God, you will experience disruptions in your favor flow that are contraindicated by the place and where you are and when you are where you are. Now, come on, come on, stay with me. It got dark at noonday. Noonday, now I know that there are geophysical and astronomical forces that keep the earth revolving around the sun over 66,000 miles an hour maintaining the necessary critical velocity to maintain the distance between the earth and the sun. If you went one mile slower, you'd be drawn into the sun. One mile slower, you'd break the gravitational pull and be hurled in the outer darkness. But I know there is a God somewhere that without the inventions of human beings or the investment of humankind, he set the earth moving at the exact necessary critical velocity that is necessary for you and me to sit right here and not even know we're moving. I know that over 66,000 miles an hour. I know that a hand tilted the earth at 23 and a half degrees on its axis, setting spinning over a thousand miles an hour, completing it in a rotation in a 24 hour period, giving us a sunrise and a sunset said I know that that's already done and I know the latitudinal location of Golgotha and that noonday it should not be dark that's a disruption to make it play something ain't right y'all Why is it when all the indicators suggest that this should be a high day, I'm having a low moment? Why is it, God, when I've said my prayers, paid my tithe, been to church, read my word, called on your name, why is it, God, when I thought my relationship was turned around, and everything when I thought noonday was my peak I'm experiencing my pain something ain't right something is not right here something is out of order it's like people of color in America when you were deceived into believing that there had been a transformation in racial relationships in this country and you were ready to step in your do your noonday and you bumped into a dark noonday. Come on. Based upon the sacrifices, based upon the commitments, based upon all that has been done, based upon the fact that I laid your rails, toted your barges, paved your streets, designed your city, made your traffic light, nursed your baby, plowed your fields, shed blood for you in a war. I ought to have a noonday, but... At noonday, I'm having a moment. 
where the light of the promise of tomorrow is being eclipsed. Help me, Lord. What's going on here when truth is being put on the scaffold? Authenticity is being subverted and people have reduced greatness to reducing somebody else and preserving your supremacy and your privilege so that you can have a high day while other folk have a low day. There's a disruption. Come on, you, you've never been where I've been. Where you get in, you feel like you're in God's flow. Huh? There's a favor flow. You check yourself to make sure you don't have any non-conductive element in your own life that is inducing the disruption. And there's no reason that you can say that I'm not a stay in this flow. Things have been moving in the right direction. I came up the rough side of the mountain. I've been through the valley. I've gone through the hell. And at last, I seem to be getting where I wanted to go and discovering what God had for me. I'm ready to move from my pain to my promise. I think I'm on my way and in the middle of on your way what is this what is this the disruption then manifest itself in darkness come on y'all and you see I am not talking about the geophysical astronomical alteration between day and night. See, night is not necessarily darkness. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I've had some of my best times in the night. Oh, don't go. <laughs> If you've never had joy in the night, never mind. I ain't going to have y'all that night. See, night is not the absence of worship. Night is not the absence of celebration. Night is not that. That's a moment in a day. But when you, what happens when you experience darkness in your day? See, darkness comes and notice how it comes. You see, this darkness, see, I used to believe that darkness was caused by God. Because, you know, I would hear the old preacher say, and uh, 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 the sun withdrew its rays from the mantle of the earth. And noonday became as dark as a thousand nights in a cypress swamp. As the sun refused to acknowledge the creatures of God who joined the demonic and became the denizens of the demonic in the dance around the tree called Calvary and sat there and shouted as blood dripped drop by drop supporting the tree of torture. I hear that. But it makes it appear like God said, make it dark. God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. So if there is darkness, it can't come from the one whom in whom there is no darkness. So if the darkness comes, it can't be God. Because the darkness is perpetrated by those forces that are alien to God's intent, desire, decree, and design for your existence and for creation. Darkness is created by those who are resisting the light. Y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> See, darkness is the demonic trying to establish an illusion that it has ultimacy and has the capacity to steal your joy. Darkness is trying to tell you, I in charge but this ain't God now see now 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 come on come on come on say 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 look look the darkness and look what the darkness does it comes it comes when you ought to have a noonday look what it does it covers oh y'all somebody missed me see 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 some of y'all might have had a little bit of dark somebody in here has been covered by the dark yeah yeah come on 
Praise every in every aspect of your life. Come on now. Huh? It's in your mind. It's in your head. It's in your soul. And you even came to church and tried to get rid of it. But you were even dark in the pew. Come on. The darkness comes. The darkness comes and the darkness gives the sense that God is absent. It comes, it covers, it continues. But you got to realize that from the very beginning, Jesus, who is the light of the world, it says that the light shone in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The word comprehend there, prehend, is the whole calm is to get your arms around it. Guess what the Bible just told you? They tried to put the light out, but they couldn't get their arms around it. In another words, they couldn't extinguish it. They tried. Come on, come on. And why do I want to extinguish the darkness? Because the light becomes a threat to my rule. Guess what you just discovered? Sometimes the darkness comes in your life, not because you're failing or you're faithless. It's because you're so fruitful that your existence becomes a threat to those who want darkness. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. See, sometimes when it gets dark, instead of crying, you ought to shout. Hey! I can remember when it never got dark because the devil didn't care. I was so weak and so powerless. I was no threat to the dark. But now this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, here you come now. <laughs> let me say this to you. If you have never been under attack, it's not because you're favored. It's because you're trifling. <laughs> You know why Jeremiah Wright was under attack? Not because he was faithless or failing, but he had enough courage to stand up for God and stand up for us. And then the darkness came. See, look, darkness doesn't have to come if you're already dark. See, the very construction of the narrative lets you know that darkness had to come because it was not presently operative or in control. So if it's come, if it comes, it's affirming that there's enough light in you that your existence is a threat to me. I mean, see, see uh, Howard, Howard Thurman put it this way with his grandchildren. He had them down in Jacksonville and they were getting ready to go on the playground. Huh? And those the days of, you know, segregation and Jim Crow. And they had two playgrounds. A nice playground for whites only. Had all of the appropriate instruments and playthings. Then they had a playground for colored only. And they had a broken seesaw one swing and a broken swing and there were puddles of water beneath the spring the other one had nice rubber so when his children came they immediately ran to where the nice playground and he said no 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 babies don't go there don't go there you can't go there and they said why and he said I, for a moment I was going to you can't go there because you you colored or you black but then he said what was a matter of seconds that sound felt like an eternity I thought to myself why would I want to plant the seed of self negation in my grandchildren where they begin to think that the gift of their culture and their color reduced them and denied them something he said I had to find me another answer so that they would begin to understand and embrace the beauty and the dignity of their intrinsic worth assigned by God and not derived from a policy come here y'all come on come on he said, oh, he said, let me tell you, though, 
You see, you got to realize that about 20 years ago, the state legislature of Florida debated six weeks whether or not you could go on the playground. After their extended discussion, they decided that you can't go. But children, don't you be upset that you can't go. You just remember you're so important that you took up six weeks of the state legislature's time. No, no, y'all didn't hear me. See, 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 you got to realize when somebody makes an effort to put you out, there must be something in your end that's robbing them of what they want to do. Hallelujah. And rather than say, I can't go, tell them, look how bad I am. Boy, can, 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 can I do something? I, I, I ain't got a few more minutes. Look, look, look. Can, can I and, and not offend anybody? See, as long as these beautiful sisters were comfortable being barefoot and pregnant and in the kitchen, didn't nobody say a word. But the minute a woman stood up and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do about these women? Hey, you got enough God in you now that we scared of you and we got a job. See, when you're a threat, when you believe you're a nobody, you're not a threat to anybody. And the darkness comes. Well, come on. I'm almost through. Look at this. But in the darkness, you make a discovery. Because the darkness comes, covers, and continues. See, it lasted from the sixth to the ninth hour. Why didn't it just say it lasted ten minutes? Because you know, guess what? The darkness can have a season. But then you make a discovery. Look what it says. It only lasts from the 6th to the ninth hour or from 12 to 3 o'clock. 9 is revelation fulfilled. 3 times 3. 3 o'clock is revelation. 12, come on. Huh? Come on. Six is the number of man. Oh, y'all got me. Twelve is the number of man compounded. Now, I know you read some books and they tell you that twelve is the symbol of the tribes and all this, but you got to realize twelve is the number of man compounded. So when you do your man thing, it's dark. But when you get your revelation, the light comes on. Y'all didn't hear me. It only stays dark until you get your revelation. Come on. And here's what you discover in the text. God does some of God's best work in the dark. <clears throat> Come on, look at it. God does some of God's best work in the dark. Amen. So the dark does not symbolize God's absence. It symbolizes God's work zone. Y'all didn't hear me. Because when it gets dark, y'all, guess what? God's getting ready to do something. <laughs> ah, come on, come on. Because God is light and in him there is no darkness. And if I affirm that God is, it means that God is in my darkness. So no matter how dark it is, there's some light in my darkness. And even when it's dark, I can see the light of God working on my behalf. Hallelujah. And where does the text show you that he's working? See, see, a good preacher, y'all, good preacher can go back and look at all the places God worked in the dark. The world was dark and without form. When Jesus was born, it was... When the shepherds were in the field, it was... When Paul and Silas were in prison... It... When he got up early, never mind... <laughs> Read down and say, early the next morning while it was still. See, what you discover is there is luminosity in darkness. That is to say the darkness is luminous. There, the light is in the darkness. Hallelujah. I discovered something. God is there. Now let me show you what you can discover. I just heard my brother, what's, what's his name, Craig? 
Galante, I just heard him sing it. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. It said the darkness lasted from the sixth to the ninth hour. That's three hours. How many hours are there in a day? 24. Which makes those three hours one eighth of your experience. Meaning that any darkness only represents 12.5% of your day. Meaning if you got darkness, you're going to have 87.5% of life. Hallelujah! And God, if you give me 87.5, I can handle the 12.5 line. Because all it is, is a moment in my movement. Hallelujah! <laughs> then, where's the other light? Look, look, look. What happened to the curtain? It was torn. The curtain is the symbol of your separation and makes you deficient and devalues you and suggests that you can't have an intimate relationship with God. You got to have a priestly mediator who can go there one time a year because you ain't worthy. Guess what the God said? While it was dark, I was hooking you up. <laughs> hey, while it was dark, the curtain was torn from what? Top to bottom. See, so not only do I remove the principles of separation, I disrupt the relational modality of separation. Because when you get separated, you got to have somebody on top and somebody on the bottom. Men on top, women on the bottom. White on top, black on the bottom. Come on, east on top. Come on, y'all. Y'all didn't hear me now. But what he just said, I am the Savior. I am Jesus the Christ. And I've come to reconcile what you messed up. And I'm going to tear this thing down top to bottom. Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Do you see? See, I will tear it down top to bottom. Now you understand. Now you understand your ancestors. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. I didn't see it at his birth. I didn't first see it at his resurrection. I saw it when it was dark. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart, come on, my sins were rolled away. Hallelujah. It was there by faith I received my sight. And guess what? Even though it's dark, I'm happy. I'm through. I'm ready to take my seat, but I'm going to help you understand this. Can I say this? And don't, don't interpret this racial like some reverse racialist. <clears throat> Blackness and darkness are not synonyms. They're antonyms. Blackness and darkness contradict each other. In our world, if you're black, you got to be dark. See, you cannot be black when it's dark. Because blackness is not on the chromatic spectrum. It's a condition of existence where light is absorbed. Oh, y'all miss me. The only way you can be black and stay black, keep absorbing the light. Y'all didn't. While other folk commit suicide, absorb the light. <laughs> There's some light in here and there's a light in the darkness and even though I'm grown I still need a light in the dark <laughs> now let me see if I can make it plain then I'm gonna take my seat uh, uh, let's look at something else about the Sun help you understand this earth does not have a circular rotation around the Sun it's elliptical and at some moments, you're 147 million kilometers away from the sun. At other moments, at your most, when you're most distance, 152 million kilometers from the sun. And depending upon where you are in your elliptical revolution around the sun, is how long it takes the sun to reach you. Huh? And another thing is that the, the earth does not only revolve, it tilts.
And sometimes you can extend the time of your darkness not by you're not in the right re- re- rotation or revolution. You got a bad tilt. But I'm going to show you something. If you're 184, 147 kilometers, million kilometers from the sun, it takes 8 minutes and 16, 6, 6 seconds for the sun to get you after it's released. Huh? If you're 152 kilo, million kilometers from that, it takes 8 minutes and 45 seconds. But if you look it up, it will tell you if you go to a scientific journal, they'll use a general number, and it will say that when the sunlight is released, you don't get it till 8 minutes and 20 seconds after it's released. So if anybody in here, you're going through a dark moment, just call it your 8 minute and 20 seconds only. Your blessing has already been released. It didn't just get to you yet. You ain't got to tell God to give it to you. He already released it. See, there's some things that the light releases. You don't have an immediate experience of the release. And what you got today was released before you even asked for it. I've had some eight minute and 20 second zones, y'all. But I've got my revelation. God has not abandoned me. It's already been released. I just got to hold on to the blessing. I see what God has already done. Hallelujah. Let me see if I can make this real plain. And I'm through. God bless you. I ain't a hooper and I ain't, you know, I ain't got a lot for you. Amen. Somebody else come up here and do that. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it. I love it. It just ain't my gift. And I don't try to step where I don't belong. Amen. Uh, I told you I got those 20. I either 21 or 22. My wife's not here. She would know exactly. Amen. I, I know, I'm going to apologize, y'all. I don't know when their birthdays are. I don't know anything. I got to ask them. So, last Christmas, several Christmas ago, I had about uh, nine of them with me at the house. And see, some of y'all understand, when you become Papa, you got to tell stories. You know, no, but see, I don't tell Little Red Riding Hood, huh? Goldilocks, I don't, I don't even talk about and this is the spider. I don't talk about High John the Conqueror or Burr Rabbit. I don't. I make up my own stories. See, I got a little boy in me that ain't quite finished getting out, and I gotta, I gotta make up some stuff. You know, come on, hey, hey amen. I make up stories, and see, I, I was born in West Virginia, so I, I tell them about mountain monsters. And in West Virginia, there were these big hairy monsters. They were about eight feet tall, and they had long teeth, and they drew. And they had green eyes that turned red when they saw little children. And by this time, my grandkids are petrified, y'all. They traumatized. They all over my neck and my knees. Oh, Papa, Papa, please don't do that. Don't say that. So I recognized that I was being a cruel Papa, so I needed to, to find some redeeming element in the story I told. So I said, yes, but one of the children gave the monster a golden delicious apple and it was so sweet, he left West Virginia and went to the North Pole to help Santa Claus make toys. <laughs> they come back the next day. And again, you got, got a little late and they want to say, Papa, tell us a story. I started making up a story. Guess what they said? No! Tell us the same old story. Don't start 
on, you don't need to bring nothing new. Tell us the same story. So I start telling the story, y'all. But I knew what I did to him to the day before. So I left out all that scary part. And my granddaughter, Elise, who's now grown, said, No, Papa. That ain't the story. I said, what do you mean? That ain't the story. That ain't the story. You left out the scary part. Tell the whole story. And I thought, she was trying to scare her little brother who was terrified. And I said, Elise, Lily, why do why you want me to tell the scary part? She said, Papa, when you know how the story ends, you can handle the scary part. Hallelujah. I can't tell you right now, but I know how the story ends. This is the scary part. But at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, there is a light in the dark. Somebody give God praise for the light. Somebody thank God for the ministry of Dr. John Kenny. Come on. Ooh. Hit two or three people and tell them thank God for the light. Jesus says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Come on, help me thank God again. Ooh. Come on, I want to extend the invitation to somebody who may want to say yes to Jesus Christ. Come on, let's all stand together. If you're here, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day that is to be your story tonight if you're here tonight you're not here by accident coincidence or happenstance you were supposed to be here tonight to get all of this goodness tonight that we have gotten from the truth of God and from this worship experience. If you're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is not a call for perfect people. It's a call for an imperfect person who's clear that you need a perfect God. God has got light with your name written on it. Every single one of us, Jesus comes to call us out of darkness into the marvelous light. But you got to accept that invitation. The scripture says none can come unless the spirit draws. If you're here tonight and you've never said yes to Jesus, maybe you need to rededicate your life back to Christ. Good people get off track. I would invite you to get back on track tonight. If that's you, you're already on your feet. I want to invite you to move from your seat. And we want to personally welcome you into the family of God tonight. What a week to say yes to Jesus Christ. What a week to rededicate your life back to Christ. If you're here and you're looking for a church home, I want to invite you to come tonight from wherever you are, whoever you are. And there are a bunch of churches represented tonight. If you don't want to join here, I'll send you wherever you want to go. 
it's not just about membership it's about discipleship if you're here <laughs> we are all we we are all just one food court with different names that's all but it's one food court if you're here i want to invite you to come from wherever you are as the old preacher will say while the blood is running warm in your veins well come on clap your hands everybody's on base take your seats we all leaving in seven minutes i want you to prepare your hands and your hearts as we give to god tonight as we give together this celebration of jesus week as it was mentioned it's a celebration of of our christ it's a celebration of the cross and everything that the cross represents but it's also a celebration of the church of the living god both the people and everything that the institution represents. As we prepare to give tonight, the scripture says where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be also, or even vice versa. Your heart is connected to your treasure. And so all over the building, I want you to get a gift that honors Christ. I want you to get a gift that honors the cross I want you to get a gift that honors the church there's a renewed a heightened attack on the church there is an increase and renewed attack on believers but we want to set the tone with this week that we have a commitment to lift up the name of Jesus to carry our cross, to carry our cross, to embrace the purpose that Jesus gives to all of us as a part of building his kingdom. And we want to celebrate the church. And so tonight all over the building, everybody's giving different gifts. Some are giving 100, some are giving 50, some are giving 25, some are giving 10. But I want you to get your best gift tonight, a gift in honor of what this, re what this week represents. If you need an envelope, hold your hand high all over the building. And we're going to give tonight in a big way all week long. We're going to honor God in a special way, tangibly. As the church of our God does so much for so many people. Represents so much. And it didn't all post it on Facebook or Instagram. In this community where we serve, we're the largest employer with a commitment to serve thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the name of our God. So we give together. Tomorrow night we do it all over again. We are a little behind time tonight, my little brother. God used him in an amazing way. He had to leave my other little brother, Jonathan McReynolds, ends his tour tonight on the north side. And so Kalante rushed to the north side to be a part of Jonathan's last tour date tonight. Uh, but he said he had 10 minutes. <laughs> I didn't say that. He said he had 10 minutes. And he didn't get a chance to sing his song. This ain't no ordinary worship. He didn't sing it, but he showed it. It was not an ordinary worship tonight, was it? That, that means we're going to have to have him come back. we we'll have to have him come back. I don't think I'm going to have no, no, no preaching tonight he comes back.
<laughs> he was amazing. It was amazing. But I'm old school. I don't like to hold the preacher, you understand. And didn't we get so much from Dr. Kenny tonight? Jesus Christ, son of the living God. Listen. And I just want to say to the saints that feel like you miss some stuff. We all got to get the CD. And listen to it over and over and over and over. Come on, ambassadors, you may serve these beautiful people of God all over the building. Hey, hey, have you ever gone over somebody's house and it was just food everywhere? It was just food everywhere. That was Dr. Kennedy tonight. Dr. Kennedy tonight. We had roast beef. We had neck bones we had ox tails we had a honey baked ham we it was meat on meat on meat on meat am i talking to any any, any real people in the building yeah no it was just meat tonight we're gonna do it all over again tomorrow byron cage is gonna be here tomorrow the presence of the lord is here we're going to have a praise party. And 2020, I call him. Our associate pastor has got the mic tomorrow night. Reverend Reginald Sharp Jr. Number three. Number three. Number three. Reverend Evans is number one. I'm number two. Number three has got the mic tomorrow. And I can't wait. Tell your cousins to come early tomorrow. If you're tweeting or posting pictures, we're hashtagging Jesus Week. We're hashtagging Jesus Week. Get your tickets for the Mother's Day celebration at the House of Hope. Mary Mary, Jacqueline Carr, Marvin Sapp, the Clark Sisters, Jason Nelson, and Fellowship. Get your tickets for Mother's Day weekend. And um, as we prepare to leave, we're behind time and we're still getting out early tonight. It's a special week. Uh, we've got special guests, our dear friend Catherine Janine, who works with Ty Tribbett and Vashon Mitchell and has worked with us, brought some special guests. I want to say this right. The Ashim Soul Children of Norway are worshiping with us tonight. Will y'all stand? Welcome to the ship. All the way from Norway. Jesus week. Make some noise. Welcome. Come on, let's all stand together. We're leaving before we start another service. Let's leave. Hey, y'all, we did a whole lot, and it's just 9 o'clock. Again, come on, y'all, let's celebrate the iconic Dr. Jeremiah A. Wright. We love you, sir. We honor you. We celebrate you. And when we grow up, his daughter, Jerry, I saw Jerry. Come on, celebrate his daughter, the entire Wright family. Listen, y'all, and as we prepare to leave, guess who else was at church tonight? Our founder, Reverend Clay Evans, was streaming tonight. Come on, y'all, make some noise. Love you, Bishop. Pray for his wife, Miss Luther May Evans. Mama's in the hospital tonight. Pray for her and pray for Claudette 
and Michael and Faith who are doing a fantastic job taking care of both of them. Pray for our founder tonight. I talked to him today. He wasn't feeling well at all today. And so let's lift them up tonight as we leave. Again, we want to thank our dear friends, Pastor Frederick Wilson, Pastor Eric Thomas, Pastor Will Hall. Thank God for all of the men and women of God that are in the house tonight. We honor you and we praise God for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our heart, hearts have felt. Thank you for the cross tonight. Thank you for the light. May we look for your light and may we be your light in dark places. Bless and cover Dr. Kenny tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hug everybody you can all over the building and tell them happy Jesus week. <laughs>